Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So have you ever been so frustrated that all of your favorite art supplies are so pricey and you actually can't afford to have them all? Well, me too and I have been through this struggle so many times so I know how horrible it feels. So that's why today I decided to make a comparison between those quite pricey and expensive art supplies versus those cheaper ones. And I want to know if those expensive art supplies are actually worth their price or if I can find the same kind of quality and some good equivalents for much cheaper price. So if you're excited to find that out with me, then make sure you stay with me and keep on watching. But just before we go ahead with the video, just make sure you subscribe to my channel to be up to date with all my new content coming and if this is done let's just go ahead with the video all right so this is the sketch that i'll be working with today and this is gonna be my cheap side and this is gonna be the expensive side so i'm already decided upon the color scheme that i want to use for this drawing so basically what i have left is to choose the right tools right art supplies for each side and I'm gonna start with picking the expensive art supplies so I know uh, what kind of equivalents should I look for in the cheaper art supplies. So for the expensive side, of course, I want to use some Copic markers since they are, well, the most expensive, the most pricey markers that exist on the market, at least of what I'm aware of. And I thought that this kind of color would be fitted for the complexion of the girl, so I need at least two colors to have highlights color and the shadow color. So I think I'll go with these two. And for the equivalents, I thought about these markers which are pretty cheap. I bought them in some random art stores or dollar stores. And well, the similarity of color is actually impressive. So that's a good start. So we have the skin tone color. Now lips for Copics, dark red. And for the equivalent twin marker again, and something like this. And then what we have is hair color. So I will need also two colors to do it, lighter one and black. So I'm gonna use these from Promarkers for the expensive side. And for the cheap side, also twin markers. It looks like the colors are really similar, so I'm very happy about it. And then the jacket, I want to make it blue. So first of all, Copics. And I actually picked three colors, but we'll see how many I'm gonna use. And then for the jacket on the cheaper side, I actually only found this marker. So I will need to work with something like this, which is also quite similar at the end. So it's cool. Okay, so now we have all the marker colors uh, laid down and now I need to decide upon the fine liners and the outline. So obviously for the expensive side, it's gonna be Copic Multiliners, which I absolutely love. So I'm gonna use 0 0.03 and 0 0.05. And for the cheaper side, I'm gonna use this kind of uh, fine liner. It's not really a fine liner, but rather a gel pen, which I bought in also some random dollar store. And I used them for my school art supplies challenge and I actually really enjoyed them. So that's the outline. And then for the highlight, I'm gonna use Copic Opaque White for the expensive side, which I actually hated with all my heart. You can see how broken it is already. It's dried out, but it just needs some water to work. But yeah, this was pretty expensive. So obviously I'm gonna use it for the expensive side. And for the cheap side, I'm going to use Art & Fly white gel pens, which are actually fantastic. And I'm so glad that they are pretty cheap, but well, they are amazing and uh, I love them. And then lastly, for the colored pencils, I'm going to use my beloved Faber-Castell Polychromos. This is how they look. And obviously I'm going to use all of the colors that I will need for shading. So these are just quick swatches and samples, how those pencils, pencils are looking. So Faber-Castell, that is on this side. And for the cheap side, I'm gonna use these colored pencils that I also bought in some dollar store. 
All right, so these are all the supplies that I'm gonna use today, the expensive and the cheap ones. I'm happy because compared side by side, the colors are very similar, so I think that the drawing will come out really cool and uh, I can't wait to see the real comparison while drawing. So let's get started. All right, guys, so now I'm gonna describe every product with its advantages and disadvantages. And also, by the way, I'm quite sick, so that's why my voice sounds different than normal. So I hope you excuse me, but I just wanted to get this video done. So we're starting off with the fine liners and the cheap fine liner, which was actually a black gel pen, kind of. Well, it wasn't the best one, actually, because it was quite skippy and not precise enough for uh, my type of drawings. I mean, if you prefer to work with figure outline, it might be okay, but for me it was a little bit too thick. And uh, also, I noticed one problem once I was erasing the pencil lines from under the outline, it started to smear around, so that is a total no for me. And even though it could work for some drawings, the smearing part is unacceptable. But on the other hand, we have the expensive uh, Copic Multiliner, which was actually perfect. I've been using this those fine liners since I got them and I've been totally obsessed with them. So here the expensive uh, fine liner is winning. And now moving on to the markers. And the biggest issue with cheap markers is that they rarely have a brush tip. And actually I was really happy because some of the cheap markers that I was using, those white ones, actually had a brush tip. But also their brush tip was not really the greatest one, I could say. Or maybe it just didn't work good with those other markers that I was using to color in her skin because it just didn't blend that well as I would wish for it to blend. So I just needed to work with a lot of layers of color to make everything blend into each other because when I was putting the darker color, it was quite streaky and it looked just too rough to leave it like this. So the solution that I found working good to make the skin look just smooth and nice, I just put a lot of layers of color to make everything blend in into uh, each other. And this eventually worked pretty good. And I was actually quite surprised with the effect I achieved with those markers. And then on the expensive side, we obviously have Copic markers. And even though I really love working with them and I adore how they work and blend into each other, one problem I noticed already a while ago is that the darker and deeper color colors tend to be quite streaky when you try to layer them and when you try to blend them into each other. And this might be also the problem of the paper that I'm using, but I know also that a lot of different artists have the same problem and it's really hard to get rid of this. So then on the other hand, I think that it's, this might be the problem of the ink itself. Let me know if you come across the same problem while using Copics. I would love to hear you out and let me know if you have some good solution for this. But Anyways, despite of those darker colors being quite streaky, here you, with using these colors, I didn't come across this problem that much. And even though you can still see a little bit of the streakiness on the right side of her face, well, when, when I was using Copics, obviously, I actually quite, I am actually quite happy with the blending I achieved and I'm happy that even though I used only two colors of markers, I could st still get way more uh, tones and way more different uh, saturation of the color in comparison to the cheap side. And overall, the work experience with Copics was quite more enjoyable than with the cheap markers. But then on the other hand, when the drawing was colored on both sides, I couldn't really tell which side I like better. So that's something to think of. Then after I colored in her face with markers, I started off with uh, adding some shading with colored pencils. And for the cheap side, I was using big pencils, which are known to be the one of the cheapest school supplies. So I was excited to see how they're gonna perform here on this drawing. 
The first drawback that I noticed is that they don't have that much pigment and well you can still do a little bit of shading but when you want to build the color up it's almost impossible and then also comes the next disadvantage of these pencils is that they feel quite rubbery on the paper and you need to put a lot of pressure to get any pigment out of them and at first i thought that these pencils are actually not that bad but when i finished the whole drawing the whole left side my hand was almost dying since i needed to put so much pressure to get the effect that i wanted so even though you can shade your drawing with these pencils i won't recommend them for long-term usage and for the expensive side, I used my favorite polychromos from Faber-Castell and these are my all-time favorite pencils, as you already know. And well, I don't have much to say about them. They are just fantastic in my opinion. They layer amazing, they blend together nicely and you can get a really rich pigment out of them as well as if you use light hand, you can get just a tiny touch of the shade on your drawing so in my opinion they are just great and of course in comparison to the cheap pencils well i don't even think that we need to speak about it anymore because the polychromos are the winner here and then after i was done with shading and coloring of the face i went ahead with coloring the hair and in this case this kind of hairstyle braided hairstyle allow me to be a little bit easy on my markers because i didn't require any kind of impeccable blending and some shading that will be reflecting how flowy the hair is here i just had braids so it was pretty easy and i actually think that in this case both the cheap and the expensive side were actually almost the same the cheaper side is in fact a little bit lighter and there is a little bit less of uh, the tonal variation and on the ex more expensive side you can see that the color is deeper i could achieve more deep shadows and the uh, lighter reflections so this is the only thing that differs those sides so i guess that's a pretty good result And the last two things I am to judge in this comparison are the highlighting tools, let's say, which in this case are the white gel pen and the Copic Opaque White. And here I already knew before I even started drawing what kind of result it will be because on the cheap side we have the Art and Fly White Gel Pen which I absolutely love and I'm using it all the time even though it's pretty cheap, it's actually great and i recommend it to everyone and on the right side we have the copy of fake white which i actually was so disappointed with the moment i bought it because i expected it to be much better actually i mean the liquid itself is not bad don't get me wrong it's opaque it's just as white as it needs to be but just the form of this liquid i just prefer to have this white highlight thing in the pen rather than the liquid maybe it's just a preference but i think that when you have a pen you have a lot more control over where you put your highlights with and you can see it also while i'm drawing this copic opaque white was making my highlights a little bit too all over the place so here the winner is actually the cheap side the art and fly white gel pen and now it's time for the summary of all the products and the final drawing and first of all, I need to admit I was so surprised because I thought that the difference between the cheap and expensive side will be way more visible. Well, here what we can see is actually that the both sides are pretty similar. There are only a few minor differences between each side. And this result right here proves one point you really don't need to spend a fortune on the super expensive art supplies. If you just practice enough, if you put hours and hours of work into your drawings, you can actually 
achieve almost the same results as with those extremely expensive art supplies. And there are only two things that stands for picking more expensive art supplies is first of all is the comfort of your work. Like I mentioned before, the markers, color pencils and the fine liners, they were all much better to work with when they were a little bit better quality. But then it's up to you if you are able to pay the price for the comfort of work or if you rather save up your money and just spend more time on perfecting your drawing. And then the second thing is that, in my opinion, if you're a professional, if you take commissions, you do some requests for people, you just basically, it's your work, drawing is your work, I think that then, in this case, you should actually also give quality in your drawings, you should work with best art supplies that they are, and you should invest in your work. And this is really important, in my opinion, because if you take money for something, you also should provide the quality. So in those two cases, I think that the expensive art supplies are better and that they are actually needed. And other than that, the choice is obviously yours. And I just hope that I managed to present you pros and cons of both sides of the drawing. And now guys, let me know which side of the drawing you prefer and what is your opinion on both expensive and cheap art supplies. I would love to hear you out. Alright you guys, so that is all for this cheap versus expensive art supplies video and let me know if you like the concept, if you like me to do more of these kind of videos, maybe not only on markers but maybe I should try some different art supplies to let you guys know if you actually need to spend a lot of money on the art supplies. Let me know about this in the comments and that will be all for today's video. Thank you guys so so much for watching and also just before you leave don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that like button if you like the video so I know that you actually want me to make more of these and also you can follow me on my Instagram to see more of behind the scenes work in progress pictures and videos so make sure you go and follow me there and well Thank you so much for watching again and I'm so excited to see you in my next videos. Bye guys. I'm just going with the gut. Never had a doubt. Felt like this is just a must. For me in perspective, I'm the deepest in the cut. Everybody tuning in, but this is just for us now.